In today's video, we're going to go over the five lighting concepts that every photographer should master. Welcome back, everyone. If you could please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I hope that your year is off to a great start. I started off the year with COVID again, so I'm glad that I've got that out of the way for the second time. But as I've been relaxing over the past few weeks, I've been watching a lot of content on YouTube, including a series of photography, lighting, instructional videos from the 80s. And if that sounds like torture, believe me, it kind of was. The instructor used needlessly large words in confusing language while explaining basic concepts. And I couldn't decide if he was just relaying the information in the way that he learned it, or if he was trying to use big words to sound smarter, or perhaps he was trying to confuse most of the viewers as a method of gatekeeping. And I know this was very common back in the day that they would try to keep as many people out of the profession as possible. And thankfully, that's not where we're at today. And with that approach to teaching, uh, which uh, I'm just very surprised uh, that anyone learned anything, and I'm sure a lot of people would have felt intimidated and had difficulty understanding lighting. So in today's video, I wanna share with you five key lighting concepts that will help you understand lighting and help you harness its power the next time that you're in the studio or on location. Hopefully without any pretense and hopefully with the most simple language possible. So the first concept that we'll discuss today is size equals softness. I've always heard it defined as the larger the light source is relative to your subject, basically how big it looks to them from their perspective, the softer it will be. Of course, the opposite is true as well. The smaller the light source looks to the model, the more crisp the shadows will appear. So let's look at two portraits of the same model, one where the light source looked very small to the model and one where it looked rather large. If we look at the shadow from the nose in both images, you'll see that it's very sharp with the small light source and quite subtle with the larger source. The second concept is angle equals texture. Having your light at an angle to the subject will result in more shadows and therefore more texture than if it were head on. If you think about a subject's skin that is sort of not the best with a lot of blemishes, in order for those blemishes to show up, we have to create shadows from those miniature mountains. And if we don't do that, then that detail will not be resolved in the frame. So using light that is closer to the direction the camera is pointed, like the light that's pointed at me today, uh, you'll end up with less blemishes in your shot. The third concept is more bouncing equals less contrast. When light bounces around a room, that light brightens up the shadows and decreases the contrast. This could either help to produce more dynamic range and more pleasing skin texture, or it could prevent you from getting the crisp results that you're trying to create with hard light. Number four, the inverse square law. You lose two f-stops worth of light every time you move a light twice as far away from your subject. This means that moving a light that's close into your subject just a few inches will have a bigger impact on the exposure than if you move a light that is across the room from your subject just a couple of feet. Once you understand this fall off principle, you can start to make all kinds of decisions when it comes to designing your set and your lighting setup. For instance, if your background is too dark and you only have one light, just move it closer to your model. Or if you can't do that, just move everything else closer to the background. If you're using a V-flat to bounce your main light back into the shadows and your shadows are too dark, 
Just move the V-flat closer to the subject and you'll get the results that you're looking for. Put another way, if you half the distance, you get four times the amount of light. Number five, color changes the mood. We associate sadness and cold with the color blue. And we associate happiness and warmth with the color yellow. So adding just a little bit of color with gels to your scene can have a huge impact on the emotion of the shot. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy learning from me in these videos, you probably would also love learning from me in person. And soon I'll be teaching workshops in New York, DC, Atlanta, Denver, LA, and here at my own studio in Chicago. So for more information and to sign up, just go to johngress.com workshops. Plus, if you sign up soon, you'll be able to save $50 with the coupon code EARLYBIRD. So stay safe, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.